What is up guys? It's Celtics Nation Jamie here and this is another vlog. We are going to the Basketball Hall of Fame to get Dr. J to sign something. Oh yeah, Sean's back here. Remember me from um, doing the dares? Doing the dares, yeah. And then Liam, I don't know what your YouTube is. Uh, well, me and Sean. Notorious a... Fusion. That's me and Liam. All right, and we're gonna... And we'll see you at... Well, Sean was also in the Cape Cod vlog. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll just see you at the Basketball Hall of Fame. On the way to the Basketball Hall of Fame. Yeah. Also, subscribe to, what is it? Notorious Fusion. Notorious Fusion, that's and, Sean and Liam's. And, then and they're making a vlog right now of this, oh, yeah. and I am too. And get me, get me. This is my own channel. It's called Kryptonite Unleashed, okay? So do all that. And also, when we're there, if I haven't told you, we are getting Dr. J's signature. And I'll show you what I'm going to get signed right now. And hopefully I can get a picture hold it, with him. Hold it. All right. All right. How do I switch this? Where's this? I'm going to get this signed. So, yeah. So, I'll, the next video you'll see is when I'm at the Basketball Hall of Fame. All right. What is up? So, we are now in... Springfield we had a little trouble on the way and now we are in Springfield so I'll show you a picture of the Basketball Hall of Fame when we get to it my dad can't right. so guys so now we are at the Basketball Hall of Fame we finally arrived and so he, they're gonna provide us pictures to get signed by Dr. J so we'll meet you inside all right so now we are here and so William's recording his but look at all this there's such so much stuff here so now I think we might go in or we might just walk around and show you stuff. So yeah, all right. Look at inside the hoop place. It's the court. And so, and then up top is the Hall of Fame people. So yeah. We are about to see Dr. J. He's about to come out and then we'll get our signatures. How's everybody doing? Good. When was the last time you said that and people were like, horrible, Doc, when you show up, the room lights up. It's just the way it goes. And so I want to talk, we have so much to get to today, and thank you for joining us the 60 Days of Summer here in Springfield. Your position as, we'll talk about your career, your development, your roots up in Amherst, all of that, but your position as an ambassador to this game that we love so much has been so important as we've watched it develop since you left in the mid late 80s and through into the century. So before we get into your career and development of the game, can you just give us a couple of words on the way this game has been chaperoned into the 21st century, what you love so much about it still? I think I can. I, uh, I, I am still doing a little bit of ambassadorial work, if you want to call it work. You know, one thing about the sport of basketball, and one thing that I've always loved about it, is that, uh, you know, if you're good enough, you could probably get paid for something that you would be doing for free <laughs> if you weren't doing it for dinero. So uh, I hesitate sometimes when people call it work, because sure. I've always uh, enjoyed the game, loved the game, Play for the fun of the game. And uh, we're all better people because of that. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, most recently, I was on a trip to uh, Tokyo, Japan, and I went as an ambassador for the, for the NBA, and I was invited to, uh, to judge a slam dunk contest. And I, I told a story recently, as a matter of fact, at lunch with Fran and, and Barry a little while ago, uh, that when I was asked to judge it, I was like, go figure, why would they ask me to judge a slam dunk contest? <laughs> that would be, of all the people in the world. <laughs> but, uh, but it was fun. Uh, we had fun over there. Uh, we were able to, uh, to represent the sport, uh, a little bit of the history of the sport. Sure. And, and obviously, as a, uh, a former player, who's still rocking the converse. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> represent you know one or more of the things that are associated with it and there's so many so many levels uh, to the game uh, so many places where you can land 
if you just elect to uh, participate. Sure. You know, so you know, as I look around the room, I mean, I see, I see some people with some real good potential. You know, they, they, they look like they have big hands, big feet, a little bit of height, you know, sleek, whatever. So they might be good players one day. But most of the people in the room probably won't be good players one day. <laughs> But there are other positions to land other than as the player. And uh, you know what they are. I mean, obviously, coaching, sure. uh, training, uh, spectating, announcing. Yes, sir. Uh, talking about it, you know, being one of the talking heads. Is that safe to say you look at me? with the sport. I just looked at you and, he, I and just, you knew. You I knew. just thought that you <laughs> talked a good game. Yes, sir. <laughs> My wife can attest to that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, Doc, a couple nights ago, you were uh, out uh, at an Allen Iverson fundraiser. Uh, and, and it's so great because you, you're a New York guy, spent some time in Mass, played in Virginia, played in Atlanta, played all over the world. But at the end of the day, Philadelphia has become home for you. Can you talk to us about watching superstars of the generation after you, the guys like Allen Iverson who are now transitioning into ambassadorship? Is that one of the joys of being where you are in the game right now, is being able to help the next generation come through to helping the subsequent yeah, generation? Yeah, it's, 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 it's an inter interesting uh, progression. And, uh, you know, I went, I went to UMass. So, right down the road in Amherst, and that was my college. And, uh, and I, I left after my junior year and turned pro, but I made sure that I went back and I got my degree from UMass because I had promised my mother I would graduate from college. And uh, it took a few years, but I, I did get my degree. And, uh, and one of the things I, I think about when I talk about education and I talk about uh, the progression of the educational process and progressing through the educational process is that I went from being a person who was mentored and you know, it seemingly always had like an older friend or a father figure or my mom, you know, who was, who I looked at as being my mentor. Sure. And then as I grew and I developed and I became a better player and became a leader of a team, yeah. leader in the community, I, I found that the role reversed, you know, instead of being mentored to, I was mentoring to others who were coming up uh -huh. behind me. And it wasn't that I was doing it consciously. It was something that just happened. Right. And uh, so therefore I felt it was part of my personal, natural evolution. And I found out that a lot of things work that way. And at age 66, now, you know, I can consider myself like an old school warrior whatever, who probably, you know, does not have the, uh, the mentor out there. Maybe Bill Russell could be considered that, you know, because he's been a lifelong friend and yes, extended the hand of friendship to me back when I was 19 years old as a, you know, sophomore on the campus at UMass. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, so he still occupies that position in my life. But most of the people that I deal with, I'm a mentor for them. Sure, sure. Whether it's my nephew, my children, or just, you know, the Allen Iversons of the world, the young players who are coming up, who once you're in their presence, you know, you, you, you see a different side of them than what the public sees. Because there is, you know, maybe a little bit of reverence regarding, you know, being older, being more experienced, and, them still yet to have the experience, experiences that I've already gone through. Yeah, yeah. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it certainly does. <laughs> and actually, Doc, let me let me ask because I, you heard the swell of applause when you mentioned UMass. I know there's a number of UMass alumni friends here. Doc, uh, so Jack Lehman is a name that means so much to all of us of a certain vintage who remember just what Jack Lehman means to yeah. UMass athletics. Can you talk about his mentorship, your coach at UMass, and, and throughout your professional career? What did, what did Coach Lehman mean to you? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question because it's so important to preserve the memory of special people. Sure. And you should preserve the memory of all people if you can and, and elect to. 
but special people like Jack, who was such a such a giver, and uh, you know the reason. Uh, there were two reasons why I went to UMass. One was Ray Wilson, and the other was Jack Lehman. And uh, Ray Wilson was my high school coach, and Ray's no longer with us, and here is Jack. But uh, you know they will always occupy a special place in my heart. They were teammates at Boston University. And when I was a uh, senior in college, you know, I came to visit UMass. And, you know, I just kind of fell in love with the campus and the school and the atmosphere and the fact that, you know, these two guys had such a caring and trusting relationship with one another sure. that I knew if I went to UMass that I would be in good hands. We delivered pretty much out of Ray's hands into, into Jack's hands. So people ask me why I went to UMass. I can think of a thousand and one reasons, but the main reason was the relationship between those two. I mean, I wanted to, to have something like that, and I became a beneficiary of, of them having that great relationship. And, and Jack, you know, in, in my uh, freshman year, uh, he used to take me around to uh, luncheons that were being put together in and around uh, Amherst and pretty much between the Western Mass. Sure, it's kind of like his, his territory. You know, he left BC and BU and you know, Harvard to Eastern Mass, but he had Western Mass. The important part of the state. Yeah, he, had, he had the important part of the state. There's Dr. J. Why, why wasn't he so Dr. J? Dr. J was signing, and look at he signed this card for us. And everybody got one. Did you print it out? Did you print it out? But, so yeah, so I got this sign. And I think we're going to walk around in the Basketball Hall of Fame. So most of mug I'm going to get. I really do like the Bobcats, and I like their old logo, so I'm going to purchase this. So I ended up getting that Bobcats cup in the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now we're going upstairs on the second floor to see, like, all the Hall of Fame stuff. So I'll meet you. All right. So we are up here now, and there's so much stuff to do up here. We only have 20 minutes, though. Because after we run a Buffalo Wild Wings, so we're going to try this. So this rebound thing we're going to do. Are you going to do a jump ball? Yeah. And then I put it hard and hard. All right. Sean, record me. That's it, Dan. It's done. All right. Who knows Jamie? Jamie, Easily. Easily. We got it, Tim. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you get me. I got I got eight three the other day. Jamie, you get it now. Alright, so I got seven eleven. So I got to seven eleven. I couldn't do it. So yeah. We're in the NBA. So now. So now we're just going to go down and do the dunking thing and then work on it and just go out to eat and it'll be over. It's been pretty fun today. And yeah. Alright guys, so that's all today. Hope you liked. Please like, please subscribe. Please comment what other places I should go. And yeah, so thanks for watching and peace out. Celtics Nation Jamie signing out.